All right, so welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be creating a reveal slider. Uh, it's animated and it uses match and move. Now, uh, this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I usually am not creating animations. Usually I'm creating videos about text manipulation or uh, digital products. Um, so this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I'm willing to give this a try. And I've tried a couple of times to attempt this, and I'm just going to take you through some tips and tricks about how I created this uh, reveal slider. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to elements, and I'm going to search for a car. And I'll just go under photos, um, this is the car that I want to use and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm just going to place it right on the edge there like that. I'm going to make a copy of that and I'm going to put it over on the other side like this. Now, the one thing that I learned uh, doing this animation was that to start with what you want to be sliding from one side of your page to the other side of your page. Start with that, make sure that that's working before you apply pictures or whatever in the background, the, the reveal. Um, once you have the slider working properly, then you can worry about what you're gonna have in the background, right? And with this car, I'm going to want to flip it the other way. So I'm going to select flip and I'm just going to move it over so that it's kind of uh, in the same position as this car over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to elements and I'm going to add a shape to my workspace. And I'm going to fill up my workspace with this shape. So I'll just grab it and cover the whole page. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change the color to yellow. And now I'm gonna move this shape behind my cars. Now I'm gonna select everything and group everything together. So I'll, while holding down my shift key, I'm gonna select the car on my left and then I'll select the car on my right. And I'll select group up here. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna slide it all the way to this side here, only to reveal just a little bit of the car. So it's not totally off the page, but I'm seeing a little bit of that car. Now I'm gonna grab that slide. I'm gonna make a copy of it. So Control C, and right after the slide, I'm going to paste it, Control V. I'm going to go to that slide and I'm going to grab that grouped element and I'm going to move it all the way to the other side like this. Okay, now I'm going to select that slide. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to paste it. And now I'm going to move that back over to the other side again. And I'm going to do this so that I have six pages. So I'll be right back. Now, before we move on to the next step, we need to add that transition. Remember we were talking about match and move. So when we hover over in between the slides, we see that there's a little option to add a transition. So I'm gonna click on that and my right panel is gonna open where I'm gonna be able to access transition. So I'm gonna select match and move and I'm going to increase the duration all the way up because I want it to go slow. And at the bottom, we're gonna get an option to apply between all pages. I'm gonna select that. And I'm just going to, you'll notice that the, the timing uh, or my slides decreased in time. And I, I want them a little bit longer, like maybe even four seconds long. And I'm gonna apply that to all pages. 
So let's see what that looks like now when I press play. All right, so now that we know that our slider is working, now we can go and fill our pages with photos. So at this point, I'm going to go to my element section and my search bar, and I'm going to search for vacation places. And I want photos, so I'll just um, fill these with photos and I'm going to, rather than place them as my background, I'm just going to place them as photos. Okay, I'll click on my second page. And I'll do the same. I'll stretch that out. Um, I found better results with stretching photos as opposed to placing photos as my background. And that's why I'm doing that this way. You can try out the effect of applying it, the photos as your background too, and see how that works out for you. That's also an option. So I'm just, my preference right now is to just place photos and resize them as opposed to making them my background. And this will be my last photo here. And of course, what we need to do is make sure that that photo is behind our cars. Otherwise, we're not going to see our cars moving back and forth. So make sure that they are behind the cars or your element that's sliding back and forth. All right, so let's go back now to the beginning and let's press play and see what happens. Okay, now you see how that transition between one slide and another, you get that fading in and out. Let's fix that, okay? Now, this is one thing that I learned after a lot of trial and error. It literally drove me nuts. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop. We're going to pause this for a sec. We're going to come all the way back to the front. And let's click that first slider. And you'll notice how right now we are seeing a slider, but it's the photo that's there that's showing us the timing of the photo and when it's going to appear in our video or presentation. And what we want to do is we don't want that photo to transition into the next slide. So we're just going to make that shorter. We're just going to end it where the photo, where the first slide ends and we're going to move over into the next slide. And we're, again, we're going to click on the photo here and we notice that it's kind of overlapping into the first slide. We're going to bring that over because I don't want that transition at all. I just want it to be smooth where the car is going back and forth. So again, I'm going to choose the next slide. And again, you'll notice that it's overlapping. I do not want that. So again, I'll choose this slide and I'm just going to adjust that. And again here, I'm going to do the same over here and again here. Now, when you're adjusting the timing, that may skew everything over. So you might go have to go back and just make those adjustments. Um, so let's see how that works now. So I'll press the play button. And now it's just moving from one slide to another. I'm not getting that fading or overlapping, which is what I wanted to do to begin with. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a page at the beginning with a title that says, where do you want to be today? So if you want to stick around, you can stick around for that. Otherwise, I want to say that I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. If you did, press that like button and subscribe.
please know that I have opened up my channel membership. So I do go live with my private group every Tuesday in the afternoon and in the evening. And I go over any uh, troubles that they are having using Canva. If you're interested, join my membership. You won't regret it. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to add a page. So you know what? I'll just add that page here and I'll just move that right to the beginning. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this page yellow and I'm going to add some text. So I'll go over to text. I'll add some text. I'm going to change this text. I hate this panel. So I'm just going to open up my large uh, panel over here and maybe I'm going to use this one right here. So I'm just going to say, where will you be today with a question mark? And I'll make that a little bit bigger, maybe even I'll make that two lines like that. And let me just change that to white. And I'm going to add an effect. So I'll come over here to my two arrows. I'll add a shadow and I'll click again to customize. And I'll just make the shadow black and I'll turn up the transition all the way. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add a duplicate. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to make a duplicate and I'm going to try and overlap it like that. And I'm going to go back into more and that shadow and I'm going to change that shadow to a yellow and I'm going to just make it a different uh, color to kind of have a different effect and now I'm going to change the direction to a positive 45 so I'm just going to get rid of that 45 and we can see there's a little bit of a shadow underneath and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that to the back. So I'll come back here. I'll go to position and I'll bring this one behind the one with the black shadow. Like that. Okay. So you can see that there's a little bit of a pop there with the white and um, with the white yellow. And um, that's pretty much it. So let's just see what that looks like now. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, I'm going to say bye-bye.